now Tulsi Gabbard, former congresswoman, former 2020 presidential candidate, Fox News contributor. Now, Tulsi, you debated Kamala. Do you think she actually thinks she's smart and effective? And if so, why? Without a doubt, she believes this. Uh, I can't even begin to analyze why that is the case. Uh, but but look, you know, she she has been uh, unqualified to serve as vice president and is not qualified or capable at all for the very real prospect that if Biden wins, uh, she will be president of the United States. Welcome to the Amon Show. This is Marlene. I am your host. And today I have such an amazing video for you guys. Oh, yes, I do. We're going to go over Kamala Harris and the number of times that she's lied and she's lied and she's lied. If I was Nicki Minaj, I would say she lied on her dead mama, on her dead mama, lied on her dead mama. Okay, that she lied, that she cried, that she lied, that she got caught by none other than Tulsi Gabbard when she appeared on CNN with Dana Bash, right? The same Dana who interviewed our favorite liar, our favorite dictator, Kamala the dictator. Okay, let's roll the clip and I will say welcome to my channel. I am Marlene and I'm glad you're here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Democratic presidential candidate and congresswoman who endorsed Trump this week and is helping him prepare for that debate. Here with me now is former congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Vice President Harris's Thanks, campaign Dana. manager released a memo this morning saying they expect former President Trump to be a quote, formidable opponent on the debate stage. Do you think Kamala Harris will be a formidable opponent as well. And how is the former president preparing to debate her? Yeah, I think Kamala Harris has a lot of experience. She is not to be underestimated. Uh, president Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris have very different records. This is a unique situation where we have two candidates who have served at the highest offices in the land. President Trump, four years as president, Kamala Harris, now almost four years as vice president working alongside President Biden. And so this will be an opportunity for voters to look at and compare and contrast those records. Uh, if if I can be helpful to President Trump in any way, it really is just in sharing the experience that I had with her on that debate stage in 2020. And frankly, helping to point out some ways that Kamala Harris has already shown that she is trying to move away from her record, move away from her positions, and uh, how that contradicts the positions and statements that she is making now that she is the Democratic nominee. All right. So let's start with some of the contradictions that Tulsi is referring to. You ready? Let's go. Start with this one. Fracking. When you were in Congress, you supported the Green New Deal. And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, sure. particularly in your must-win state of Pennsylvania. Sure. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah, and, and, and starting... And starting with what we can do on day one around public lands, right? And, um, and then there has to be legislation, but yes. And this is something I've taken on in California. I have a history of working on this issue. And to your point, um, and, you know, that we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. Yeah, so thank you. So would you ban offshore drilling? Yes. And I've, again, worked on that. <laughs> Joe Biden will not end fracking. He has been very clear about that. <laughs> so, you see, she said that in 2020, she said on the debate stage that she would not ban fracking. No, she said Joe Biden will not ban fracking. But when it comes to her, oh, yes, baby, you better believe it. She has a long history of doing that in California. And she also does not believe in drilling. And it is a remarkable situation in that you are uh, a... Uh, Democrat who debated her in a Democratic primary, and now you are helping the Republican uh, nominee to debate her. A and on that, I remember in 2020, you attacked Harris for being too aggressive as a prosecutor, which is the opposite from what Donald Trump is saying about her as weak on crime. So which is it? What I pointed out in that debate stage and 
the 2020 campaign was her hypocrisy. It was how she was saying one thing and doing another, how she was prosecuting people for, for smoking marijuana and laughing about it when she was asked about it uh, on a radio show. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhaled. I did, in, I did, did inhale. inhale. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> Harris explains her pro-pot stance and admits that she indulged in the substance while in college. Then this exchange happened. What does Kamala Harris listen to? What were you what listening to when you was high? <laughs> what was on? What song? Was, was oh my goodness! Oh yeah, definitely Snoop. Uh huh. Uh, Tupac. This goes to the heart of many of these different issues that we're seeing now. That Kamala Harris is is trying to hide from voters is how she says her position is one thing, but her actions and her record show exactly the opposite. And you can point to that on issues related uh, to the economy, issues related to freedom of speech. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. How Kamala Harris fought to keep nonviolent prisoners locked up. So in the case of Daniel Larson, an ex-felon sentenced to 27 years to life under California three strikes law, Harris argued that even if Danny was innocent, his conviction should not be overturned, reversed because he waited too long to file his petition. So pretty much he should stay in there because right now he's just nothing more than an inconvenience to her. So I'm in, uh, Senator Harris, your response? As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about re-entering former offenders and getting them counseling. It is why and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to not your, only your decriminalize but legalize marijuana in the United States. I want to I want to bring a uh, congresswoman. Uh, okay. So she says that she wants to legalize right marijuana in the United States. Now one would say, Mella Harris, aren't you currently? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, are you not currently the vice president? Right. So why hasn't she done these things? My proposal includes what would be a tax credit of $25,000 for first-time home buyers, so they can just have enough to put a down payment on a home, which is part of the American dream and their aspiration, but do it in a way that allows them, them to actually get on the path to achieving that goal and that dream. So you have been vice president for three and a half years. Yeah. The steps that you're talking about now, why haven't you done them already? Well, first of all, we had to recover. Exactly. Why have you not done them already? Why hasn't she legalized marijuana already, right? But here she's saying, oh, I want to legalize marijuana. Let her say it one more time. In getting them counseling. Thank it is you. why, and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken, that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to not your, only decriminalize, but legalize marijuana in the United States. I want to, I want to. So she's been vice president for almost four years, right? Why hasn't weed been legalized already? Okay, this is exactly what Tulsi and I are talking about. Let's resume. Bring uh, Congresswoman uh, Gabbard back in, your response. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position mm -hmm. to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, 
innocent people. You actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. The district attorney of San Francisco, Kamala Harris, appeared in the courtroom during your trial twice. Yeah, the two times that Kamala Harris um, sh showed up to my trial was the when I got convicted and also when they laid down the sentencing. When you saw her on the day that the verdict was handed down, did you take that as a bad sign? It, it felt to me that she was well aware about my case and she was there to set her presence, almost take pride in getting a conviction. When I put in my appeal, the people that's fighting against my appeal to keep the conviction is the attorney general office. I learned it reading, you know, their their reply to my uh, appeal, and you see Kamala Harris' name at the bottom. And now it, it's starting to feel a little personal. Mm -hmm. When you win the $13.1 million, it's a massive settlement. Did you feel like that was enough? There's not an amount that could get back those seven years that uh, was well, six and a half years that I spent in prison. But instead of me coming home feeling like I was a victim, I wanted to prove that I was, that I'm a survivor and I will not let my story go unheard. You know, I'm not necessarily saying I'm looking for an apology, but some acknowledgement from her that she could have messed up would be, of course, that'd be huge. You could have made some mistakes. You could have missed some things. For me, it was a big miss. You know, I had life in prison. I think you can judge people by when they are under fire, and it's not about some fancy opinion on a stage, but when they're in the position to actually make a decision, what do they do? When I was- Exactly. She's currently in a position as vice president to legalize marijuana. She has not done it. She hasn't done it, right? She's currently in a position to do many things. And she hasn't done those things, right? You know, the power I have as a prosecutor is that with a swipe of my pen, I can charge someone with a misdemeanor, the lowest level offense possible. And by virtue of that swipe of my pen, you will have to go to a courthouse and stand in line. You will have to come out of pocket and hire an attorney. You may get arrested for a few hours. You will be embarrassed in your community. You will miss time from coming onto the Google campus, all because with the swipe of my pen, I've tried to charge you with a crime, which I may choose to dismiss two weeks later. Wow. It's an incredible amount of power, you know? And you see how much she enjoys that power, right? She enjoys getting even, she, like, she's just so petty. This lady is so petty. Now let's go back to the main interview. Stands for freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And yet, as we've seen time and time again, her and Joe Biden, have taken actions both directly and indirectly to censor mm -hmm. free speech. Uh, most recently, I can point to my own experience of this, of how the Harris-Biden administration have added me to a secret domestic terror watch list the very day after uh, Kamala Harris was endorsed by Joe Biden. And I was on TV and warning the American people about what I saw as the dangers of a Kamala Harris presidency, taking action that was clearly political retaliation. They've done this yep. to a lot of different people. Joining us now, Tulsi Gabbard, former congresswoman, former 2020 presidential candidate, Fox News contributor. Now, Tulsi, you debated Kamala. Do you think she actually thinks she's smart and effective? And if so, why? Without a doubt, she believes this. Uh, I can't even begin to analyze why that is the case. Uh, but but look, you know, she, she has been uh, unqualified to serve as vice president and is not qualified or capable at all for the very real prospect that if Biden wins, uh, she will be president of the United States. That's a fact. Regardless of who's on the top of the ticket as, as the Democrats figure this thing out, whether it's Biden, Harris or Harris, whoever, uh, a president Kamala Harris will be our commander in chief. And I can tell you as a soldier who's deployed to multiple war zones and I can speak for a lot of my brothers and sisters in uniform, that prospect should be terrifying for all Americans. She is incapable and unqualified to be our country's commander in chief, which then leads to what I know to be certain. Just as Joe Biden is not calling the shots on our foreign policy, he's got 
Tony Blinken and Hillary Clinton and Jake Sullivan and Lloyd Austin mm -hmm. and all of these other people in the deep state administrative state who are not elected, who are actually making these decisions related to our foreign policy, who have pushed us to the brink of multiple wars, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and closer to the brink of nuclear war than ever before. If it is a President Kamala Harris, a Commander-in-Chief Kamala Harris, it will be the very same, same deep thing. state making these decisions that have that have done such great harm to our own national security and to our freedom as a country. Yeah. So what exactly did Tulsi Gabbard do to get added to the terror watch list? It came the day after she criticized the Biden administration right here on The Angle. See, our foreign policy decisions are being made by unelected people in the military industrial complex who are profiting from us being in a constant state of war and the national security state that has more power to undermine our freedoms and liberties when we are in a state of war. Kamala Harris does not have the strength to stand up to the military industrial complex. Okay, that's wild. Joining me now, Tulsi Gabbard, former U.S. Congresswoman, Fox News contributor. Tulsi, now you serve this country in uniform, even getting deployed to Iraq. Thank you for going, unlike Tim Walz. And now you're being surveilled I mean, it's a form of surveillance or hassling and, and intrusion upon your freedom to move um, by the government. Oh, what, what is this? I mean, I didn't believe it really when, when I first heard about it. I said, oh, that can't be. But how does this make you feel? Laura, this is a clear act of political retaliation. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to put it. You laid out the sequence of events the very next day after my conversation with you on the air warning the American people about how dangerous a Kamala Harris presidency would be, I was placed on this domestic terror watch list, which is called the Quiet Skies List under the Department of Homeland Security. The, the clear uh, pain and, and, and real visceral hurt that comes from this is, as you mentioned, like many Americans, I enlisted because of the terrorist attacks on 9-11 to go after the Islamist the ter terrorists who attacked us on that day and to now have my own government now turn around and put me on a domestic terror watch list uh it it is it it hits to the core and, and is the ultimate sense of betrayal but but we look at why they are doing this it has a chilling effect it sends a warning both to me and to anyone else mm -hmm. who even thinks about daring to criticize our own government which is a guaranteed protected right under the first amendment <laughs> yeah that that we will be subject to a violation of our fourth amendment right to privacy uh through this kind of, of surveillance and that's that's the biggest stress that's been caused by this entire situation laura is now forever i will for, i will always be looking over my shoulder wondering if and how our government in any of these different agencies is surveilling me, watching me. Are they reading now, my they text be reading messages? It, Are they reading, listening to say, my phone calls? Yeah, I, I was going to say yes, yes, and yes. That's what I would guess, at least. Now, in a letter from whistleblower attorney Tristan Levitt, um, he writes that the special mission coverage in Ms. Gabbard's case reportedly involves two explosive detection canine teams, one transportation security analyst and explosives, one plainclothes TSA supervisor, and three federal air marshals on every flight Ms. Gabbard boards. So this is what she has to go through. Every time she flies, she has to have three U.S. marshals with her. Okay? This is Kamala Harris. All right? And, she, and she's proud to say it because here she is again saying it. Now, the power I have as a prosecutor is that with a swipe of my pen, I can charge someone with a misdemeanor, the lowest level offense possible. And by virtue of that swipe of my pen, you will have to go to a courthouse and stand in line. You will have to come out of pocket and hire an attorney. You may get arrested for a few hours. You will be embarrassed in your community. You will miss time from coming onto the Google campus. All because with the swipe of my pen, I've tried charged you with a crime, which I may choose to dismiss two weeks later. It's an incredible amount of power. And she means it. This lady is drunk off of power. Let's go. It is to have people in power so willing to abuse that power to go after political opponents. Okay. All right. And also, let us not forget that recently we also have 
none other than Mark Zuckerberg, who recently came out and told us that the White House, the Biden and Harris administration, was putting under pressure to censor people on Meta. Says the White House pressured the company to censor COVID-19 content, content rather. Julia Borson joins us with more. Was this during the pandemic then? Yes, that's right. So Mark Zuckerberg just writing in a letter that just was posted late last night in a, into the House Judiciary Committee that the Biden administration pressured Meta to censor COVID-19 related content on Facebook, writing, quote, in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content including humor and satire. Ultimately, it was our decision whether or not to take down content. Going on to say, I believe the government pressure was wrong. Okay, so even humor and satire had to be taken off the website? But Trump is the dictator? <laughs> yeah, right. We've already met our dictator. Her name is Kamala Harris. Now let's go back to this. Uh, I'm not familiar with the secret terror watch list. We're definitely going to follow up on that. Uh, but I So as you guys can see, hopefully, yeah, Kamala Harris is a dictator. She really is. She's a dictator. She'll say whatever she has to say to get elected. She is, she thrives off this, like this power of being destructive, okay? Of, of sending the prosecution after you, the Department of Justice after you, special prosecutors after you. Can you imagine? You hold this lady accountable for her foreign policy. And next thing you know, you're being put on a special watch list where every time you fly, you gotta have three air marshals with you and dogs with you to chase you along the airport. That is insane. It is insane. It is insane. And I pray to God, I really do pray to God that for the sake of America, that this lady does not get to be president. Her, Joe Biden, and the Obamas and the Clintons need to stay very far away from the White House. They need to go. They truly need to go. Okay? They all need to go. All right? So, you guys, I will see you in my next video. And I'll have a longer form video of this one. But for the time being, here's the video so I can have the shorter version for those who like to see shorter content. Thank you.